Hello and welcome to this installment of the Wildland Urban Interface Wildfire Educational Series. My name is Irene Shanley and I work in El Paso County Extension. And I'm going to be talking to you today about the top 10, my top 10 low water ignition resistant native plants. So why low water? Well, it is predicted that due to climate change, as the decades go on, that we will be experiencing increasing heat, drought, and aridification throughout the entire West. And so water is gonna become more scarce. We're also getting more population. And so we need to be thinking about how to use water the most wisely. For the same reasons, um, the, the heat, the drought, and the aridification, we're also expecting to have increasingly severe wildfires and increases in area burned annually of at least 50 to 200% by 2050. So we have to be considering wildfires wherever we are in our planting. And so a lot of people just wanna give up. They say, you know, the yard is, my lawn is too expensive to keep up. I don't wanna be spending the money on my water bills. And I just, you know, and I also am afraid of, of fire. And so I'm just gonna give up and I'm gonna just gravel over my entire lawn. And that isn't what you have to do. And in fact, if you plant these top 10 low water ignition resistant native plants, not only can you reduce that urban heat island effect that would happen if you put gravel down instead of um, a lawn or other green plants, um, but you will provide habitat for pollinators, you'll have a more aesthetically pleasing yard and you can still have a low maintenance yard. So these are the pl plants that I would choose um, for all of these reasons. First one is Pussy Toes. So this is a ground cover. It has beautiful gray green foliage and it works well between uh, the cracks of flagstones, but it also will just work well as a edging plant. It stays, it even looks good in the middle of the winter. So this is a year round interest plant. Wine cups have spectacular hot pink flowers. They can cascade over um, retaining walls. They have a nice sprawl to them. So they sort of act as a ground cover and they do bloom for a long season of time. They also look wonderful with those gray green colors such as the pussy toes. Sulfur flower is another ground cover like plant. It has yellow green flowers in the early part of the season. It's the host for a lot of butterflies. And it even has another season of interest when um, the leaves turn reddish bronze in the winter time. So this is another multi-season interest plant. Very, very hardy. You can see it here um, looking really nice as an edging plant. So these would all be uh, good ground cover type plants. Blanket flower blooms in the middle of the summer. It's this red and, and yellow flower that attracts pollinators. It looks good um, you know, with, with penstemon in the background and it just adds a lot of cheer to the middle of your, your summer. Prairie smoke can tolerate part shade. It has these beautiful sort of rosy heather flowers, good for pollinators. And then we'll get another season of interest with a seed head that has sort of fuzzy light catching seeds. Prickly pear is um, very low water as you might expect of a cactus, but it has a lot more interest than I think a lot of people give it credit for. It can have beautiful flowers, usually in May and June, very attractive to pollinators. And then some species such as the Phaeacantha will have great fruit, which provide a lot of interest into the fall and the early winter when it starts to fade. Some prickly pears even have purple pads that will look beautiful in the winter time. So don't outright dismiss um, prickly pear. You might not wanna put it someplace where you're gonna brush against it while you're walking, but this is actually one of the most ignition resistant plants of all. Cheyenne mock orange is a really nice shrub. Um, it has fragrant flowers in the, um, in the springtime. They're really beautiful. If you're concerned, so some of the fire resistance can come from a more compact variety. So, a nut, so you can also look for some of the um, smaller varieties 
of, uh, of Philadelphus, the mock orange, if you're looking for a little bit more of a compact plant. But this is a regional native and it is a very tough plant. Pawnee Butte sand cherry is a really good selection of our native sand cherry. And it has more of a ground cover form. So that's what gives it a little bit of extra fire resistance. It has fragrant flowers in the springtime that are followed by edible black berries, great for wildlife. And the, and the flowers in the springtime are great for pollinators. And then it turns a beautiful red in the fall. And so here you see it um, in the fall. And then penstemons, which we mentioned with the blanket flower, there's many different varieties of them and they're all very fi fire resistant and drought tolerant and they're all great for pollinators and they provide such a great splash of color in the garden. So um, some commonly available ones are the orchid or side bells penstemon, the blue mist penstemon, and then a little bit later blooming in the summer, the Rocky Mountain penstemon and the Scarlet Bugler penstemon. But there's also um, the, um, Penstemon rostra floris, and um, there's a firecracker penstemon. So there's a lot of different kinds of penstemon, and they're all good choices. Yucca is another very uh, fire ignition resistant plant, and it has spires of white flowers in the springtime, and also has just really interesting um, kind of an architectural presence, and it, it has a great presence all year round. And those are my top 10 plants. So I hope that you find that if you plant these, you don't have to give up and just go the entire gravel route. And you can have a beautiful yard that is interesting all year round and is still ignition resistant. Thank you.